Welcome to Average Joe's Pool. Today we have another in our series of pool chalk review videos. And today we're looking at a chalk that has taken the snooker world by storm and that's now transferred across into the billiards industry. This is one of the hottest products out there currently. This is the Taum V10. Now this isn't a cheap chalk and it's certainly got a lot of reputation to live up to. Can it do it? Let's find out. So Taum is a company that's based in Finland and they've been developing chalks for the snooker and pool industry for the last few years. And they've enjoyed some notable success with previous chalks uh, including Pyro and the 2.0. But what we have here is their very latest creation. This is the V10. Now the one thing that might be immediately apparent as you're looking at this chalk would be the color. Why do we have a green chalk on a blue cloth? And the reason for that is the V10 is currently only available in green. The wizards at Taum have not yet found a way to manufacture this particular recipe in any other colours apart from this light green. Now if you're a snooker player or you're a pool player that has a green cloth on their table then of course that's absolutely perfect. But what if, like me, you have a blue cloth or in fact any other colour of cloth apart from green? Well Taum claim that the V10 is one of the cleanest chalks in the industry and this should leave almost no residue on your pool table cloth and likewise should not leave any residue on your balls either which is great because nobody likes dirty balls. Let me wash your balls for you. Now as long as I have this stick you won't. We'll wash them together. Why don't you just chill out? And talking about dirty balls, that's also meant to be one of the major advantages of the Taum V10. And the Taum V10 is meant to massively reduce the likelihood of cling, which is also known as kick. And of course that can be a major, major advantage. Now when it comes to price, it's not the cheapest chalk that's available, as you would expect. Likewise, it's not the most expensive. Uh, this will set you back around $20 per cube. And it is fairly easy to buy. You can actually pick this up on Amazon at $20 per cube with free shipping. And we will be adding Amazon links into the video description below. So if you like the look of this chalk and you're thinking of buying some, please be sure to support us here at Average Joe's Pool and use the links in the video description. So will the Taum V10 be a complete game changer? We've got some tests to run it through to see exactly how good it is. So let's get started. Strange individual to be sure. I've never seen his like before. So here at Average Joe's we do test a lot of different brands of chalk. So to help us do that we have a standard set of equipment that we use and also a standard set of tests. And if you want any more details on the equipment that we use or the tests that we perform please be sure to check out our Chalk Off video where we compare lots of different brands of chalk all in one video. And in our Chalk Off videos we go into more detail on what the particular tests entail and the equipment that we use. When first applying the V10 to a freshly scuffed tip, we did notice that it was a little bit tricky to get the initial first even layer, and also that the chalk initially was a little bit snatchy against the tip. And it does tend to go on quite thinly, but it also goes on very evenly. And once the initial tricky first coat had been applied, then additional chalking becomes much, much easier. The V10 definitely has a slightly creamy texture and overall is a very smooth and fine chalk. We also notice that the V10 seemed to produce little to no dust during chalking, so it's definitely looking to be a very clean chalk at this initial stage. So we'll award the V10 with 3.5 stars out of 5 for application. For test number two, we're going to see how many draw shots can be performed without re-chalking and whilst ensuring that we always hit the cue ball with the same point on the tip. And this test is repeated for a minimum of three sets to help ensure we get a fair overall average. And a good point of reference here is Master Chalk, which achieved an average of four draw shots under our test conditions. And the V10 smashed that, coming in with seven, seven and six draw shots across our three rounds, giving us an overall average of 6.67 shots. An excellent result that definitely suggests that this is an extremely capable chalk. And so with an average of 6.67 shots, our V10 scores four stars out of five for miscue limit. For our next test we're looking at chalk retention. 
and we'll be striking the cue ball 10 times with a firm stroke and then also doing a second set of 10 using a hard stroke. And for this test, the cue will be lightly rechalked between shots as required. And we're looking to see how much chalk is lost from the cue tip onto the table surface and also how much chalk remains on the cue ball. And after our first set of firm shots, there is virtually no dust around the strike zone at all. That's remarkably clean. And likewise, taking a look at the cue ball, we can also see that that is extremely clean as well, with only one minor chalk mark remaining. So next we repeat the test with a second set, this time using hard hits. And once again, around the strike zone, we have only the very lightest of general dusting, but with no obvious splatter pattern. That really is about as clean as it gets. And looking at our cue ball, it does not have a single mark on it. And by the way, that yellowish spot you can see just above the red dot is not actually chalk. It's a discolored spot on our cue ball, but it's not chalk. And so with our V10 leaving close to no trace that was actually ever there at all, we're happy to award five stars out of five for chalk retention. I only remember the Shogun's Ninja. And for test number four, we're looking at cleanliness. And when we do the initial chalking of the cue, and again, whilst doing all re-chalking between shots in our chalk retention test, we do that over a piece of plain white paper so we can judge just how dirty the chalk actually is. And what we have is actually quite an interesting result. We have some larger particles here, but upon visual inspection, some of these larger pieces are definitely crumbs of leather from the tip scuffing. And the medium sized particles you can see here all seem to occur upon the initial chalking where the chalk was quite snatchy against the naked tip. And what we noticed was that the amount of mess that we were seeing basically did not increase at all after our first chalking was complete. And so what we're seeing here is almost no fine dust at all, which is quite remarkable, especially considering the very nature of pool chalk and what it's made from. And we really can't imagine how a chalk could be cleaner than this once past its initial first chalking. The Taeyeon V10 really is a super clean chalk, so we'll award the maximum five stars for cleanliness. Finally, we have to factor in value for money. And at $20 a cube, this certainly is not a cheap chalk. But that said, it's definitely not the most expensive either. But what you are getting for your money is definitely something that's a little unique. The V10 simply does not feel like most other chalks. It's much smoother and cleaner. And because there is virtually no chalk retention on the cue ball, this could virtually eliminate cling, also known as skid, from your game, which definitely has to have a value for serious players. And so we're happy to award the V10 with three and a half stars for value for money. So next we'll average out all of the scores across our five test categories, which will give us an official average Joe's rating for the Taeyong V10 of 4.2 stars out of five. A truly amazing chalk from Taeyong that definitely deserves to be recognized as one of the world's greatest chalks for Q Sports. How about a V10 Lamborghini? How's that for friendship? So there we are, we've had a look at how the Taeyong V10 stacks up from a technical perspective. However, I wanted to delve a little bit deeper into this chalk and since doing that testing, which was about three weeks ago, I've actually been playing exclusively with the Taeyong chalk. I must say the biggest advantage of this chalk is definitely it has a massive reduction in the likelihood of cling. Now we usually use master chalk here because we test so many different products here. We do need a kind of a standardized benchmark. And so for all the products that we test, we do tend to use master. And with master chalk, you do unfortunately get the occasional cling. However, using the Taeyong V10 here, the cling has almost been eliminated. There's virtually no cling at all, and that's playing many, many hundreds, if not thousands of shots with this chalk. So I can easily understand and appreciate why people are using this because that offers a massive advantage to your game. And of course, we all know that the uh, Taeyong V10 has been very, very popular in the snooker world. Many, many professional players have already swapped over to the V10. However, the uptake may have been a little bit slower amongst pool players, and one of the reasons for that is definitely going to be concerns over the color. 
Now, unlike the uh, Taon Pyro, which is available in blue, our V10 that we have here only comes in green. Unfortunately, we have asked Taon whether this product will be available in blue, uh, but they have advised that currently, because of the way this chalk is made, that they're not able to do it. But of course, it is something that they are working on, so that may well change in the future. And of course, if you are a pool player and you have a green cloth on your pool table, then this is of zero concern to you. If, however, you have a tournament blue cloth, as we have here, or another colour that's not green, then you may be concerned, well, is this chalk going to leave marks all over my cloth? Well, having played around with this, I can confirm that it leaves no marks on your cloth. And I found that even when you put the uh, tip of your cue down, if you're aiming up a shot and you put the tip of your cue down on the table, it still doesn't even leave a mark. The only way that I managed to get any marks onto the cloth is when I accidentally, when I was uh, lining up a shot, accidentally kind of dropped the cue and you get that tiny little bounce, then you get a tiny little spin of chalk. But of course that's down to user error and not the chalk itself. But in reality if you're using this chalk correctly you're not going to have any problems getting this green chalk onto your blue cloth. So if you've been looking at this chalk but you were concerned about the colour and that's the single thing that's putting you off giving this a try then really put that to the back of your mind because it's genuinely not a real concern at all. So yes, the Taon V10 is an expensive chalk. However, it is also somewhat of a unique product and is definitely different to your old traditional chalks. So I have to say, I didn't think I would be, but I absolutely have become a convert. This is an excellent chalk and I fully understand and appreciate why it's been so successful and why so many professional players are using it. But was there anything about it that I didn't like? Well, just by chance, uh, a few days ago, we were filming a video, a review video for this, which is the uh, McDermott uh, Jump Training Ball. And so when we're doing the, uh, the test for this ball, of course, we're doing lots of various different types of jump shots. And so I was using a jump cue. I was using the McDermott Stinger, which has the phenolic uh, resin tip. And the test that we were doing at the time is we're actually uh, seeing how many balls we could uh, jump over uh, whilst trying to add a little bit of backspin onto the ball. So we were coming in at a fairly aggressive angle. And whilst we were using the uh, Taon V10 during that particular test, uh, we found we were struggling to get over about six balls. And it should be said, I do use the Taon V10 for jump shots uh, all the time. If you're just jumping over a single ball, i.e. a normal uh, jump shot, you shouldn't have any problems at all. But what I found doing this uh, particular test is that we were struggling to get over kind of uh, around six balls uh, using the Taon V10. And like I said, it was at quite an aggressive angle uh, during that test. We just found that the uh, Taon V10 was just starting to slip a bit and it wasn't quite holding uh, whilst we were trying to jump over those six balls. So the test did become a little bit frustrating. And so what we thought we'd do is we'd revert back to the chalk that we normally use during testing, which is the standard master chalk. And once we were using the master chalk at the same angle, uh, we could jump six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven. I think we uh, st stalled on eleven, or it might be twelve. I don't, I don't recall. Uh, but we could definitely uh, get a lot more performance on that phenolic tip using standard master chalk at that extreme angle than we were getting with the V10. And as I did mention before, that is a somewhat unusual test because you wouldn't normally try and jump those kinds of uh, distances uh, with an extreme angle. But it was quite interesting that whilst we were doing that, that the master was able to hold on that phenolic tip a little bit better than our V10. But I wasn't quite happy uh, with that test. Like I said, we were testing it at quite an extreme angle and it was an unusual test. So I wanted to go back and compare directly uh, jumping for distance uh, at more regular angles uh, using both the V10 versus the master. So what we did uh, is we got rid of this uh, McDermott jump training ball and uh, we reverted just to the standard uh, Aramith uh, Pro Cup spotted cue ball. And for this second test, we were just doing a good old fashioned distance jump test. So what we we're doing is we we're coming in a much uh, shallower angle going for distance. And we're going to see how far we can get the cue ball to jump, i.e. how many balls we could jump over. I'm glad to report that when we did that test, we got a much, much better result for the V10. Uh, we managed to jump uh, 21 balls uh, with the Master and identically also managed 21 with the V10. So obviously 21 is about the limit of my jumping ability. So when you are using the uh, Taon V10 on the phenolic tip, but you're using fairly regular angles, not too extreme, it will perform as well pretty much as any other chalk that you'll find. So really that was my kind of only uh, niggle with this, is I did find that when you're using extreme angles on the phenolic tip, not on a leather tip, uh, that it does uh, start to let you down a little bit. So if you are doing quite extreme uh, jump shots, maybe trick jump shots, that kind of thing, 
then the Taeyong V10 may not be the best option on that phenolic tip. But for regular day-to-day -day use, including jump shots, you're going to be absolutely fine uh, with that Taeyong V10. And I'm still using the uh, Taeyong V10 on my brake cue, uh, which also has a phenolic tip, and I've had no issues with that whatsoever. But that is just something just to keep in the back of your mind if your intention is to push the cue ball to its extreme limits using a phenolic tip, then you may want to pull out something different from your bag. Check it out, it's Stream Shatter! Ah! And so that is our complete overview of the Taeum V10. And please do remember, we will be adding some Amazon links into the video description below. So if you're interested in buying this, please be sure to help support us and use those links. And likewise, we always ask before you leave us, can you take one second out of your busy schedule just to hit that like button for us? It really does help out our YouTube channel. And whilst you're there, why not hit the subscribe button? We've got loads of great pool related content just waiting for you to take a look at. So thank you once again, and we'll see you on the next video. Fight or run. Run.